Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. I actually got sent this uh, welder from Pro Stormer. Actually, I forgot the lady's name, but she asked me if I wanted it. And uh, typically, I would say no, just because I'm so busy right now with like the turbo stuff and the LS stuff. And uh, I just got another motor over there. You guys will see a, another video on that pretty soon. But the lady didn't ask me to do anything in particular. She said, hey, can I send you one? And then you do like a review or something. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? But also this is a stick machine as well as a TIG machine. So I'm not expecting it to have all the equipment for TIG, but I'm expecting it to be able to at least weld stick. And because I'm gonna be doing some frame stuff in the near future, uh, I won't have to mess with my Omni Pro too much. And I can go ahead and just focus uh, one welder per process and it'll be a lot better. So let me go ahead and open this up for you guys so we can see what actually came in here. I don't have my razor blade, so. All right, so I got it all out of the box and the first thing you guys are gonna notice is that it came with one of these uh, cheesy like uh, welders masks that usually come with these welders. A lot of people like to complain that these kinds of masks are included with the welders because they're not really useful. You're typically holding your material with one hand and then welding with the other hand. But in this particular case, it's not that big of a deal because I have seen pipe welders that use stick use these kinds of masks. They actually hold it with one hand and they weld with the other hand. Aside from that, and also people from other countries that don't have the flip down helmets, uh, this helps a lot in case they manage to get one of these in stock but they can't get the helmets and this, this thing comes with kind of a mask, which works out. So I'm not really upset with this. I'm, the welder also came with like a slag hammer slash brush of sorts. I'm probably gonna use it up fairly quickly, but I do tend to use larger metal slag hammers and really big brushes regardless, but it's a nice inclusion so you don't have to go out to the store. The machine itself is actually pretty cool. It's actually like a dark blue. The letters are really nice. The vinyl decals are very clear. It looks very professional. Um, the strap that's on here is a nice inclusion so you can carry it around. One thing that I would have liked was that if these were actually like uh, like D-ring style and you could just clip these on, that we can take them on and off depending on the situation or if you wanted to, you can install your own strap to it later on instead of having it run through here because if it's like this and you have to move this out of the way and then pick it up, uh, it's kind of redundant. So this is okay. I'm probably gonna take it off. I don't really like it. But what really impressed me were actually the length of the leads. These leads actually extend probably closer to like eight to 10 feet. They're really, really, really long. And that goes for the electric holder and the ground. So that's actually really nice. The plan for this welder is actually have it right under my other welder next to my plasma cutter. So that's gonna be all right there. And with the leads being as long as they are, it actually makes it really convenient in case I gotta go around something or go over something to get some welding done, especially when I start working on the frame of my truck. Moving on to the interface of this welder, I don't actually know what any of this means. I'm probably just going to read the manual or if I decide not to read the manual, I'm just gonna turn it on and see what actually happens. I'm assuming that if I set it up for stick, the only thing I need to worry about is the dial in the center and that's just going to give me the amps that I'm gonna be putting into the metal. One quirk about this welder is actually that it's native 220. So the plug for it is a three prong 220 plug, but it comes with an adapter to plug in a 110. So I would have liked this to be native 110 and then it would have came with an adapter to go into 220. That would have been fine, but this is okay. At least I can plug it into a 110 outlet. In case you guys don't know, I run my shop with a generator, so I don't have easy access to 220 as far as I'd like to. I do have access to 220, but because of noise, I tend to keep the generator as far away as I can, and I don't have any plugs long enough to reach the 220 about 50 feet away from the barn. You can still hear the generator right now, but it's convenient that I can go into 110. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and try it out. Because of the sandstorm we had earlier, um, everything that I have is covered in dirt right now, but I'm still gonna use my flip down mask because it's a lot easier for me to use this than it is to use that pipe face mask. Um, I have the manual right here for the welder, but I'm just gonna set it aside and let's see if I can go ahead and figure this out without it. I would have liked this machine to come with a couple rods, at least just to get something started so we don't have to go out and not only find metal, but get some rods too but like two three rods would have been nice but i can understand why this machine i looked it up afterwards this machine was super cheap so i can understand why they wouldn't so basically what i have right here 
is I have the machine set up to 40 amps. Uh, I just turned the dial way back. I think it was set up at 100 amps and then I turned it back. Uh, I am on a generator, so I don't know how well this is gonna work out. So I've got it on 40 amps. Let's go ahead and see if this thing will light. So final verdict on this machine, for the sub $200 that you're gonna pay for it, it welds so much better than my $900 Omni Pro and it just tore up this metal like there was no tomorrow. I am super impressed. Overall, getting it set up was actually pretty straightforward. I literally just hooked up the leads, positive to positive, negative to negative, uh, hooked up the 110 adapter and then hooked up the 110 cord because I'm not gonna be running it on 220 because I'm actually going to be pitting it up against my Omni Pro in terms of how easy it is to weld. And overall, I was actually pretty impressed. The only thing I set up was the amps and I just turned the amps a little bit higher. I had no problem welding all the way up to 90 amps. I didn't weld anything higher than 90 amps just because I was already tearing up the metal so much. I'm not a very proficient stick welder, but I could definitely tell that it was much easier to get the arc started and the arc was much more consistent than my Omni Pro. My Omni Pro does wire feed very, very well stick it actually struggles quite a bit so it's no surprise that i would actually lose in that category against a dedicated stick welding machine i tried a couple different rods with this machine i tried eighth inch 60 10 i tried 332 seconds 60 10 i also tried 1 8 70 18 and i was actually able to weld very consistently with all three of those rods provided that i adjusted the amps appropriately i am super impressed definitely recommend i'll you'll see you guys all in the next one Night Wrencher out.